the second lecture, I'd like to explain holographic calculation of entanglement entropy and some related recent developments. But I think this is probably the first uh, lecture about the ADS safety. So let me start with ADS safety. So the ADS safety is found by Manugasena. Is a, a relation between gravitational theory and the uh, conformal field theory, some quantum field theory. So the claim is that gravity on ADS d plus h d plus one is equal equivalent to uh, CFT d dimensional CFT, which we write it to CFT d. And the uh, so first observation is that this anti-Dositta space. It's not, Dojita space, this d plus one dimensional anti Dojita space has a SO d comma one symmetry, this isometry, a geo geometrical symmetry, isometry. And uh, this has a, some symmetry, SO 2d. CFT has a quantum. Field theory has a symmetry, SO 2 comma d. So this is conformal field theory, conformal symmetry, quantum field theory. And uh, then so then, so this equivalence is the ADS CFT. This is ADS CFT. ADS CFT. So quantum field theory is actually equivalent to gravity, but it, it, which lives in higher one higher dimension. And this is a special case. This special. This is a very surprising relation. It's a special case. Spe, special example. Example, example of holography. Holography. A holography means uh, uh, d plus one dimensional gravity is equivalent to the some non gravitational theory which lives on the boundary of uh, grav uh, of gravitational space time. So, namely, this holography. Holography is like this. Uh, we have we have a uh, boundary. Some we have some bulk space. Let's write it bulk space like this way. And then some boundary, which lives on the space time. Its bulk is bulk is here, and there is a gravity is lives on here, and this gravity is dual to this. Non gravitational theory, typically quantum field theory or matrix model or something like this, which lives on the boundary. And typically, boundary includes a time direction. It's a holographic relation. And uh, if we want to calculate something, and then we have to uh, compare two different quantities, which is one of the partition function in the bulk gravity, this gravity is equivalent to a boundary boundary CFT partition function. So this partition function is both sides are equivalent, equal to each other. And actually partition function can include right, an external field. And by taking the derivative about this external field, you can you know, calculate correlation function in conformal field theory side and compare with some gravitational quantity. So this is a basic relation. This is kind of something bulk to boundary relation. Boundary relation. Bound to boundary relation. And uh, then, so typical example of area safety. So let me, so we might talk, I mainly focus on a very simple setup of area safety. And uh, so one basic example is a uh, Poincare radius. So I, I can write it, uh, I can write, uh, I can write a uh, uh, metric. So this is a very simple metric of anti dosita space, which mainly uh, we work with. So dz square and dz square, d mu and d mu. Okay. okay. And uh, so this looks like, so some brain, it's like uh, brain here. And we have like uh, uh, some extra dimension, which is called z, so this z direction, z is extra. that. Other than Z, it looks like Minkowski space, right? This is just R, RD. In Euclidean signature, it's like RD. Or maybe in Euclidean signature, RD, but it's in Laurentian signature, one comma D minus one. 
but it's just extra dimension, z is extra dimension. Then, 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 uh, so you, you, you can, so you have some x mu direction here. And then, of course, mu runs 0 to 1 to d minus 1. And uh, so this geometry looks like uh, like this. It's like going this. It's warped geometry. And the basic point is that we need a, some cutoff, right? So we need a cutoff. That means we have to put some z equal epsilon. We, we have to restrict to space time z greater than epsilon. The reason is that z equal 1, it's end on z equal 1, but it's, z equal 1 is metric is divergent. And this cutoff is correspond to a CFT. In CFT side, this is UV cutoff, UV cutoff of conformal QC of, of CFT. Quantum field theory has a, a as also typical in uh, this uh, appears in uh, area row divergence. We have uh, some UV divergence. And uh, in untitled star space, UV, UV Space time is very, UV divergence is very clearly appeared geometrically because volume gets divergent, like this way. Volume gets divergent this way. Okay. So this is a, a typical example of area safety. And this, you know, this is, holography says that gravity is dual to some theory, quantum field theory lives on the boundary. And in this case, boundary, this boundary of Poincare ADS d plus one equal to just this one. Right? It's R, R uh, one D minus one, right? A Minkowski space. So we are talking about quantum field theory on a, a Minkowski space, and that is dual to Poincaré ADS. So this is a, a very standard setup of area safety. And uh, here we one more comment is that here important point is that so already as we already mentioned, so this epsilon is a UV cutoff, and Z meaning of this Z is like so this Z Z is kind of plays a role of length scale. Length scale. Of, in the sense of renormalization group. This is a very basic relation, very basic uh, interpretation of area safety. So we have some quantum field theory. We have a quantum field theory, and quantum field theory, we can we take some Fourier transformation of quantum field theory data, right? And we have some UV data and IR data. Right? And uh, we put some, so from that we construct some geometry. And the uh, UV data is here. Right? Sorry. Uh, UV data is here. Here it's like UV. When you, uh, Z is very small UV, but in a large Z is like infrared data appeared. Right? That way, I, I mean, you can fully decompose and record each wavelength information at each point of this Z direction. So this is basically what they said. And if you excite the theory, so this is a ground state. This, this corresponds to CFT ground state. But if you slightly excite the system, then you know, if, we, if we talk about low energy excitation, you get some small you know, ripples, small gravitational waves here. But if you use, uh, think a very high energetic excitation, some excitation appeared here. So that way. And if low temperature, for example, black hole, you get a black hole horizon here. But the high temperature black hole, then you get a, a black hole horizon here, right, very close to the bound. So this is a basic, you know, interpretation of this energy scale in ADS safety correspondence. Ah, so yeah, okay. And then you you can see this, you know, length scale relation. It's like Z. You have this symmetry, right? So this metric has a this symmetry. This is this corresponds to scale transformation of conformal field theory. This is dual to scale transformation. Scale, scale transformation of CFT. If you are to this one, that means like shifting, restating uh, x, but at the same time, rescaling, you know, z. So that that this shows that right? z is a, a language scale, related to language scale. Okay, so this is a basic introduction of this area safety correspondence, and we are going to use this. And the most important point of this uh, right, relation is that for us, it's like this you know, UBIR relation, so it's called you know, Z direction is interpreted as the ring scale. This is very crucial. And we have some, this UB cutoff, this is a very crucial in my uh, uh, coming lectures. Okay, so then let me go. Now we go to 
the main topic of this uh, lecture, which is entanglement entropy. So I will give some holographic calculation of entanglement entropy. I will give actually three different, actually more precisely four different formula, but the two of them are equivalent. But that means we have some actually three version of holographic entanglement entropy, uh, also in the light of recent progress. So this is the first one. Let me talk about the first one. And I will study the first one very in detail. So holographic entanglement entropy. So this is a version one. Okay. So this is for entanglement entropy for static. Static space time, static space time. So this is actually, so for this case, entanglement entropy. So we, we can define entanglement entropy as we, as we explained in this morning. So how we can calculate for entanglement entropy in ADS safety. And I, let's focus on static case, static space time. And, but static space time is very easy because we can think both uh, Euclidean and Lorentzian, because both uh, Lorentzian, Lorentzian and Euclidean, Euclidean, uh, uh, actually, we can think both Lorentzian and Euclidean, and then we can, because they are equivalent, because we can take, we can take a canonical time slice, canonical, slice and that's, we can just set t equals zero. So then uh, low range and the canonical time slice, I mean I mean time direction is removed. So it's you know both low range and the Euclidean geometry is the same. Basically essentially the same. Uh, uh, so what I wanted to say uh, 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 same basically the same and so here is some uh, picture that what we want to do is we have like a boundary right and we have like uh, this g direction and we have uh, some system a right so we have uh, a to define entanglement entropy and we think this cft lives on the boundary in, in just standard a cft and we have like this right and this is a bulk radius it's a bulk we say it's a bulk ADS D plus one, and this is a boundary. Boundary is a CFT. Ba boundary is a CFT. Boundary is a CFT. D. <coughs> then it's a, so we want we want to calculate we want to calculate you know entanglement entropy SA SA. We want to calculate SA right? for this subsystem choice. And then crucial point is this is boundary, right? This boundary. And the idea is to have calculate entanglement entropy is to extend this boundary towards the bulk, right? And uh, so that let's like to uh, yeah, let uh, let's up. So this is an extension, which we call gamma A, right? So in holography, right, always we have a you know, extra dimension. We always have some kind of extra dimension. That means we can extend some object, important object to the bulk. So that's what we do. And then, so we can calculate this area. Entropy is somehow related to area, you know, as Beckenstein Hawking formula tells us. So area divided by 4G Newton. This is always good combination. Always should be divided by 4G Newton, right? Like Beckenstein Hawking formula. But this problem is that there are many, infinitely many different way to find gamma error. You can choose this one, but you can, you can choose literally bit distorted one, or you can go this way and so on, right? So uh, obviously, so here who, what we have in mind is, you know, so boundary of, so here we impose this condition. Boundary of A is boundary of A, right? So it should end on the boundary. It end on the boundary, right? On this boundary of A. So, but uh, there are many, so we actually pick up particular one, which is actually minimize. We minimize this. Minimize it. Okay. And uh, so this is actually holographic entanglement. This is what I find with you.
And this is the first form, yeah? And but applicable to only time independent setup. But good thing we can focus on the implicitly we take t equals zero, actually. Time slice, we take t equals zero, actually. So everything's Euclidean, right? And it looks like hyperbolic space. So we can define just we can talk about Euclidean geometry and we can compute the area and minimize it, right? So this is the, uh, how this works. And the, so but there are one more important constraint, which is called homolo homology constraint. So A and gamma A should be hom homologous. Homo this becomes very important if you think about black hole setup, right? Some space time with black hole. And one more comment. So this formula is, yeah, we, you know, not only, this formula is applicable to not only this kind of pure ADS space time, but also some any asymptotically ADS space. Uh, okay, applicable. Well, to static, eh? static, but static. Applicable to uh, asymptotically ADS, uh, but static. static. Background, BG is background. Right? So you can read with this you know, like ADS black hole. If that's a static, then you can apply this form. And uh, for pure state, so one comment, one comment for pure state. So that means, like, if you talk about you know black hole, that is has a, some black hole typically have a temperature, and such a setup is usually dual to some mixed state. But we are talking about a uh, pure pure state, pure state. So that case, it's obvious. It is, it is clear that S A equals B, right? So here B is outside, right? So for entanglement entropy to calculate B, right? We can we need some gamma B, but this is same, exactly same, right? The sum we just extend some boundary of A and B towards the bulk, and this is just this guy is same as gamma B, right? So. Uh, Unless we have some topological obstruction that is actually come from black hole. So we have SA equals SV. This is consistent, right? For pure state, always SA equals. And uh, yeah, so, so also yeah, already we mentioned, but we need a cutoff, right? UV cutoff, so like this, right? We, we need a cutoff. So to calculate this, this literally gets divergent, right? If we calculate this area, we will do later, but it's get divergent, but we need a cutoff here, right? That is Z correction prescription. Okay, I, I'll just say this. Next one, I'll explain this. And then, so 3.3, and so we talk about the basic properties. Holographic entanglement entropy. And let me talk first, start with area row. Area row. Area row. So this is actually it's a, just we are talking about leading divergence, right? We already discussed a little bit um, for area row. So let's talk about again this area setup. So we have like this, and this is z direction, and this is x direction, x mu direction. And this what we did is so we talk about region A, so we talk about region A, and extend, right? And minimize area, so this is a minimal surface, right? Minimal area surface, minimal surface. And because we, we minimize right? area, like here, like this way. So, and we want to evaluate, but we can have some, at least reading term is very universal, actually. We don't need to think so much. So we talk about this, but we, we need some, of course, UV cutoff right here, Z equal Actually, Z equals zero is here. But it's that then you know metric warped infinitely, so it's get divergent. But already the when epsilon is very small, right? Uh, contribution is very focused, right? So contribution is very focused, and the R is the radius radius, and the for G Newton we take compute area, right? We compute area and it looks like this, right? And the x direction, so x direction is like this integral d minus two. This totally, you know, this guy is total D plus one dimension, dimensional, so, uh, sorry, sorry, D minus one dimensional surface, you know. And uh, so Z and Z factor D minus one, because this is D minus one dimension, it's like always this factor appears. 
and it's e epsilon to some value. So I don't know, this is not, you can set this star, but this is not important. We are interested in divergence. Right? And this come, this R appears, of course, alias, alias, uh, metric. Right? So uh, maybe uh, we just use, let's see, we just use this metric. You know? So then, so we evaluate this, right? And then, so looks like this, and this is the same factor. But th this part, we can just talk about this up lower bound, right? And then it looks like this, d minus two, d minus two, epsilon d minus two area, area and the boundary of a, boundary of a. And there's some uh, higher order term, right? Maybe d minus three. So, and this is a just honest result because this is like this is integral in this direction. This is a boundary away, right? And it's just give this factor. And this is exactly area, right? This is exactly area. This reproduce, reproduce area. Also, maybe you might be interested in this prefactor. This prefactor is proportional to this is a famous factor. In ADSFT and degree of freedom, proportional to degree of freedom, or some part more well, in even dimensional conformity, this proportional central charge, central charge in even dimension. It depends, detail coefficient depends on the scale, but uh, uh, dimension, so the even dimensional CFT to a CFT to two dimensional CFT, this is just central C, proportional C, but higher dimension also. In 4D, it's like A. A central charge appears. Okay, and these are, uh, I mean, importance. Also, this importance is we put cutoff right here. This cutoff is very, very important, right? and we reproduce area. Right? Okay, so then we go to uh, ADS3 CFT2 setup where we have some nice formula, right? as we explained in the morning. So, ADS3, so this case is very easy to calculate. So, you can think. X direction, X direction, and D direction. And so the minimal surface, so we, let's talk about, uh, yeah, a subsystem is like this. Let's take this subsystem is here. So let's take subsystem is here, this A, right? And uh, this length is like to L over two. L over two and minus L over two. And we we talk about the minimal surface, right? Which is, uh, which covers A, right? So this is a minimal surface. Okay, this is a semicircle actually. This is a semicircle, this is gamma A. This gamma A is simply given by X square and D square equal four by L square. L, L is a length, right? This is L, right? And, yeah, and then it is very easy to calculate the area or actually lengths. Right? We just need to calculate this geodesic length. So that's what we do. And the metric looks like this Poincare metric, d square and d square dx square, right? And the s square and the gamma, so this gamma a looks like this induced metric is one dimension, l square and d square and the L square for this square and the Z square. Right? And then area of this gamma A, it looks like two times R, it's like twice because you know, we have this length and this length, right? just twice of that. And the length L over two, epsilon DZ, Z times L, L square and for Z square. Right? And the, after integral, you get to R of, Error by epsilon. So that way, so finally, we, we get entanglement entropy is area divided by 4G Newton, right? Area of gamma A. So this looks like C over 3 and log error by epsilon, right? This is what we already see, right? It's fast formed by the error assembly check, and we can reproduce this the result by using area CFT. And here, from here to here, so R is ADS radius. We use this relation, this famous relation between ADS radius. R is not ADS radius. ADS radius and the 
Newton constant and central region. And this is famous Brown Fennel no relation. Brown no relation. Okay. So this is the ADS3. Yeah. So well, yeah, we can perfectly reproduce what we know for entanglement entropy in quantum theory. And then then we go uh, more a more interesting property called strong subrelativity. Sub the activity. Okay. This font by Frederick and myself. Okay. And uh, so we can actually quickly derive a uh, strong subrelativity. So this is a uh, uh, I just wanted to quickly mention here. So we, so for that we can have a very simple picture. So let's see. Okay. Yeah. So we talk about subsystem, right? A, B, C. Right? So we talk about A, you know, B, C, you know, A, B, C, tripartite system. A, B, C. You can add the extra space, that's fine. And then, so, so originally, if we talk about entanglement entropy, so S, A, B, right? We talk about S, A, B plus S, B, C, right? This is a starting point, right? Let's calculate this. Then this is, A, a B is like, like, A, B is this region. So, in your surface is like this. So, we have this, right? This is a gamma A, B, right? And the other guy, this is gamma BC, right? But you can, the same thing, we just write the same thing, we just write the same, same, you know, curve. But you can just call, name this, this guy is some surface, looks like cusp, right? But it's some surface for B. But also you can think other guy, this guy is some surface for ABC, right? Prime ABC. But these two guys are not minimal surface, right? Up to this point, it's the same, you know, same. This area is same, area or this, this area is same. Uh, here we write everything projected down to two dimension, but this is, is true for higher dimension. Right? Obviously, you can just uh, imagine a right? higher dimension of But actually, this, this guy is obviously not the minimal surface, right? It's funny surface. This is also, there is some actual uh, minimal surface which we write it here, right? This is a true minimal surface gamma B, and this is a true minimal surface, which is gamma ABC, right? So that means this, you know, length, sum of these lengths is uh, get smaller here, right? Obviously, this is small, small. So that means this is small and S B plus S A B, okay? Maybe C. So this is a, a very simple proof of a, a strong subarity. Okay. So, okay, so now we go uh, one more. So this is a, a strong subjectivity and we go to one more important property of holographic theory, which is namely phase transition. So this is head. It, this is a fast. Okay. It's going to buy Frederick. Okay. And uh, for that, we, we have some analog of phase transition. And the only true for polar theory, which is like A is this joint union. Okay. This. Uh, Connected subsystem. Let's assume subsystem A consists of two disjoint union of some small uh, some subsystem. A1 time A1 plus A2. Right? So typical example is like this. So you have like again again boundary, again boundary, and so we have. Uh, well, let's delete more and more. Okay, and then we have a subsystem A1 is here, right? A1. A1 
A2 is here. But uh, let's see. Ah, sorry, it is good to write this. A1, A, if A, let's assume A1 and A2 are very close to each other, like this. This is one case, and the same length, but it's A1 and A2 are separated. It's quite separated. This is a here, example. And then the first case, actually, depending on the length, minimal surface, actually looks like this. This is for gamma A. But the second case is there, far apart. You can connect, you know, like this way, but this is much larger, right? Area gets larger. We always minimize area. So this guy is actually so favored. So this guy is favored, and this looks like gamma A1, gamma A2, but gamma A equal to gamma A1 union gamma A2. This guy is not different, right? So that way, so this kind of, I mean, transition happens, you know? So when a, this is when A1 and A2 are close. A1, A1, so okay, distance, maybe I write distance, right? Distance between A1 and A2, small, right? This is distance between A1, A2, it gets large. And some at a particular value of distance, there are some sort of transition between these two. This kind of this side. And then there are other parameter of the transition. This is namely uh, mutual information. Okay. So you can talk about mutual information. A1, A2 is defined as entanglement entropy for A1, A2 minus A1, A2. This is not non zero, right? Because of this relation here. But here, actually, mutual information is zero, right? Because of this trivial relation, this is zero. So we, if we neutral information non zero, then we learn that we are in this phase. This is connected, this is called connected phase. And so this is called, let's call it connected phase. It's disconnected phase. Okay. So these are uh, phase transition phenomena. And they, if we talk about the standard quantum field theory or standard quantum field, this kind of phase transition don't happen. So this phase transition appears because of large N limit or large C, large central charge. This is very special to uh, classical gravity. Large C limit. In, in geometry, right, we can have a very simply, always we have some sharp phase transition, but if we take into account of one of n correction, this you know that one of n correction wash out this phase transition. That is also very study, and things are changing. Okay. Let me go. So uh, the uh, also uh, one more important point is this is also something I emphasized at the beginning of this morning lecture, which is like pure state versus mixed state. This also plays a very important here. So uh, let me consider some mixed state. But the uh, point is that so this finite temperature, mixed state, typical example, of, you know. Um, Mix of state. So let's take a mix of state. Mix of state example. 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 Finite temperature. And this is dual to actually. If we have temperature, then gravity, gravitational background, which is the temperature, is typically black hole. Right? There are no other example which we know. Like black hole. Black holes. Uh, of course, we can have some you know, standard ADS geometry and compactify time direction and the, you know, impose periodicity. That is called sum, summer ADS. That's also final temperature. But if we go higher temperature, always phase transition of gravitational solution, it goes to black hole phase. Right? So, this is, so what I mean is like we have ADS black hole. So I had in mind high temperature phase. High temperature phase. Temperature phase. Okay. So this is a yeah. So the thing. Is, let's start with this mixed state example. So then uh, we can need to compactify uh, setup. But uh, okay. So I just here. Okay. And then we have some black hole here. This inside is a black hole, right? This is a black hole. This this guy is very 
we are called. And we are talking about some subsystem A, right, which is situated here. Subsystem A and maybe other, other guy. Right? The other part is B, right? It is good to also write it B here. This is B. So we calculate entanglement entropy for A, right? So that's case, what we find this gamma A is like this, you know. But if we calculate gamma B, then it looks like this. Ah, oh, sorry, this is not, not good actually. So gamma A is looks like this, this one, this one. This one is gamma A, and gamma B is looks like this. Ah, oh, sorry, it's not true, like this. So the reason this gamma B, gamma A and gamma B is different is gamma B, gamma B is different from gamma A. This is very important. And the reason is that this is a homology condition, right? Please remember for homology condition. So this one, right? This homology, gamma A and gamma A, uh, gamma A and A is uh, homologous to each other. So B should be homologous to this indeed, right? They, they are, uh, I mean, topologically related. A is also related because if we go beyond here, it's like we have an obstruction, right? Topological obstruction of black hole, some extra one cycle, right? Appears, it's different. Homology is different. So that way, um, we have this interesting difference here. So that, of course, means this means, of course, this leads to SA is not equal to SB, right? So this is very typical, uh, typical in mixed state. SA equals SB only for pure state, as I explained. So, that, so, so uh, space time has some uh, difference. As a space time, I mean, geometry actually explain this, you know, topological obstruction, such a geometrical argument explain this, you know, SA equals SB, like uh, difference, which is important in quantum information theory. Okay. So, but you can imagine that one more step, or you can go, A, A goes to large, you know, A, A gets to very large and total, total space, right? We can assume tot A goes to total space, then what happens, right? So let me write some picture. And that case, you, you still have a black hole here. Black hole, black hole is here. And uh, so you, 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 so, so, so you, you find, so A and B is here and you can expand it. However, uh, so A gets larger, right? A gets larger, but uh, so for that case, A is, gets large like this way, A is large, but what happens is A is very large, but uh, now actually minimal surface, it looks like this, you know. So I write it a little bit different, maybe let me use purple. So this is a gamma A. But also, because of homology constraint, one cycle should, you know, we should wrap here. Right? We call it this, this is sigma, this is because of black hole horizon. And this is a, a gamma A, this is actually gamma, sorry, sorry, this is a gamma B, right? This is gamma B. This is gamma B, because this is homologous to this, right? This is gamma B. Right, that way, what we find is that in this setup, gamma A is equal to a gamma B union sigma B A. Sigma BH, uh, black hole horizon. So this means that, so this means that entanglement entropy, so entanglement entropy SA minus SB is black hole entropy. Okay, black hole entropy. Or maybe we can also say this, there are some general rule, which we know. So it's SA and A goes to total system, that limit, A goes to then, this looks like black hole entropy, right? So this gives some, I mean, relation. Right, between entanglement entropy and the black hole or thermodynamic entropy. This is the same as thermodynamic entropy, thermal entropy. Thermal entropy. Thermal entropy. And the SA equal is, is uh, still violated here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so these are mixed state story, right? So now we go to uh, pure state, pure state, pure state story, pure state black hole. Your state black hole, and then this is like much like you know, just some dual to conform a few theory state, but very heavy state, heavy state, very high energetic state. It's dual to some pure state black hole because it's, the state is obviously pure, right? 
but nevertheless it looks like some thermal state. And in that case, we have like uh, we have like this black hole, black hole like this. Again, we have black hole, and uh, we have black hole, right? And uh, so we have like this. And uh, in that case, actually, so we have again we have talk about some regions A, right? We we have like uh, some region is A, so we have some region, some region A, some region A, and the, and the remaining region is B, right? Remaining region is B. And the, so that case, we again need to think about gamma A and gamma B. Gamma A is uh, actually turns out to be equal to gamma B. This is the point. So the reason is that so we have like uh, right naively we find this surface and you know this surface right looks like gamma b but this is not gamma b this gamma b prime is actually because black hole is pure state right so actually in such a black hole you can topologically you know equivalently modify this surface to this surface you know you can penetrate this black hole. So that actually happens for pure state black hole. And in uh, that case, we have uh, equality. And uh, this means that, of course, SA equals B. OK. So SA equals B. So this should be true for, right? It should be true for pure state. So this is a very, uh, I mean, so it's very, very consistent with what we know in quantum information theory, and this realizes nicely in a geometrical uh, setup. So this is how, you know, holographic entanglement entropy works so well. So these are a very typical example. These two are very typical example. Uh, maybe uh, if I write this uh, uh, Penrose diagram, maybe it's like this, right? It's good to write it here. It's like this. So this is a, there are two boundaries, CFT1. This is actually some of you double. But this, so this is a, uh, this double sided case is a mixed state example because these two guys are entangled with each other. So, uh, because of that, because these two are entangled, so you know, if we trace that one of them, it's like really mixed state. But a uh, pure state black hole is like a single sided black hole. Maybe I should write it here. Uh, maybe I should just simply write it. It's like a half of this, basically. It's just you can mean you can cut out right one of this surface, and here it's like you 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 have some you know you have some something like this. It's end end of the you can say this end of the world brain. Right? This is an end of the space time, and then you know because of that at, at that time you know you. Everything squeezed to zero size, and that's the reason you can, you know, modify this surface towards this surface. This is here. It's like the end of the world. But anyway, yeah. Also, this end of the world brain plays a very important look, uh, role in my uh, lecture tomorrow about the ADS and dual to boundary conformation. Okay, and the. Uh, so, so this high higher dimensional black hole, as uh, so this higher dimensional conformal theory, we would like to look at because we we explained this area law divergence that is true for any dimension, but and we derived entanglement entropy for formula for ADS three, but we didn't so much talk about higher dimensional conformal theory, and here I'd like to talk about this higher dimensional. Higher dimensional uh, conformal series. Okay, and the, so okay, and so here are uh, again some picture sketch, and this picture, and the, so we have z direction, and uh, we have we have a uh, subsystem A in any shape is fine. So I'm talking about more general behavior. And let's assume this linear size is L again. And uh, we can write down some minimal surface. We can imagine some minimal surface, something like this. We don't need a detailed form. We have like this. 
and we calculate this entanglement entropy, holographic entanglement entropy. Again, this for G Newton and times area, area of gamma A. And then we can actually show that uh, generically, we have this following uh, form. It takes following form. Uh, zero. So we, we have like this, as it's P0, L over epsilon, uh, this is a leading divergence, this is area of divergence. And next reading, next time it looks like this, L over epsilon, T minus four. This coefficient, of course, depends on the detailed shape of A, right? And uh, then it ends up with some final term, right? And we, of course, we take a epsilon goes to zero, and right? we have this, you know, you'll be cut off, right, always. Always you'll be cut off, you'll be cut off. And then, what we find is that this D equal, so it depends on, these are depend on the dimension, whether the dimension is even or odd. So all the dimensional conformal theory, it's like we have some linear behavior, a P D minus three and L over epsilon and some constant, some constant, some constant. On the other hand, on the other hand, even dimensional conformal field theory, we have like Q and log logarithmic divergence and PD minus two, right? Some constant. This is not so important, but this, ah, sorry, this is not important, but this guy is very important. This guy is universal, plus this is universal. Universal, because uh, it does not depend on cutoff. But this guy is not, not so interesting because uh, if we shift the epsilon, cutoff scale, then because it's log, right? Previous time is log, so it changes. It gets some, we have some constant shift. So this is not, not interesting, but this coefficient of logarithmic time is interesting. This is actually linear combination, turns out to be linear combination of central charge, central charges. Right? Because this is logarithmic term, you know, means, this means basically, you know, wire anomaly. This is wire anomaly. Wire anomaly. This is related to wire anomaly. So it's like, proportional to central charge. Okay, so these are a basic behavior of this uh, higher dimensional uh, conformal field set. And this is uh, also, you can confirm this behavior from CFT calculations and this also agrees. Especially you can directly, uh, you can just express compare express value of the central charge term and also this universal term. This is also called F, F quantity. F quantity, F theorem, and so this is related to central charge C. Right? Both are uh, in appropriate setup, both quantities are monotonically decreasing under RG flow, and this is called F theorem and uh, C theorem. That's very important. Uh, okay, so these are higher dimensional uh, of few theory uh, calculations. Ah, okay, but I just noticed there are some chat. Uh, so the question is from Morisa is that can we distinguish a pure state black hole with a mixed state one by only by space time metric? Ah, okay. That's uh, actually, so if we look at just outside of, uh, so if we, we look at this metric outside event horizon, we cannot distinguish the, the same metric. But if we look into the uh, inside the black hole region, so for mixed state black hole is connected to another Right, another ADS space time, asymptotical ADS space time, right? Like this, right? As already we mentioned. So this is a mixed state case. We have another one, CFT one, it has a CFT two. And the single sided it means basically you cut it into half, right? So that case we only have one of them, basically. So we only have one asymptotical geometry. So we, we actually see if we go to the horizon, you you will see some end of the world brain, like or some star, or, or some star. And a star like, uh, uh, not, not a star, it's like a, some, some matter. No, I should not like something, but uh, some, you know, if we go to the event horizon, it's like you get some matter. And it's don't go to another one. So that means this guy has a, some structure of one hole, right? So, so that's correspond to this, to, to asymptotic regions that entangled with each other. And so if we focus on one of the boundaries, it looks like, uh, mixed state, this is a mixed state, but if we have just one, you know, guy, then this is a pure state, okay? So you, we can, if we go inside a black hole horizon, you can distinguish these two guys. 
Uh, there are another question. So SA does not contain information of center. Uh, okay, so yeah, so the question is that SA does not contain, right? Uh, information of central charge, but uh, in auto dimension. But in auto dimension, there are no central charge. You know, central charge is related to this wire anomaly. So basically, it's related to trace of trace of energy storage tensor, and we expand this in terms of some. You know, for example, in 4D, it's 4D. It's like central charge uh, C is related to wire this wire curvature square, and uh, this Euler density. This Euler density is related to A anomaly. And then, because this is, should be curvature is in even dimension, even dimensional point, right? So it's like always this can be, you know, central charge defined for even dimensional conform field theory. Although dimensional conform field theory, there are no central charge, no wire anomaly at all. Okay. And that, but instead we can define some, instead we can define some constant, which is like this guy is constant, which is called F. F quantity, it's just free energy, basically. You, you can think about partial function on a sphere. And that has a, some nice property, like uh, monotonicity and the RG flow, as in uh, C theorem in even dimensional conform field theory. OK? OK, yeah. So now, yes, yes, sure. Uh, uh, is it in higher dimension, is this A or C? Ah, A, A. Ah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, good question. So that depends on the choice of subsystem. If you choose sphere, if subsystem A is just S2, for example, let's take a four-dimensional conform field theory. Right? And then if you choose subsystem A, so that the boundary of A is a sphere, then you get an A. I think I remember it's a minus four times log A, log A of epsilon or something. However, if you choose other shape like cylinder, right, then I think you get a C instead. I forgot the precise shape, but uh, it's like other shape, probably cylinder. I think you get the logarithmic coefficient looks like C, central charge C. And in more generic shape, it's like a complicated linear combination of A and C. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for the questions. And uh, so, okay, so, before we go on to uh, another holographic formula. So in the case me... of odd dimensions. Ah, sorry, well, could you say again? Uh, so in the case of odd dimensions, uh. um, so the constant term, you said there's no physical meaning of it. Um, uh, could you please oh, say it? Sorry, you have to all the oh. dimensions. Oh, sorry, even dimensions. Uh, even dimensions. Even what dimensions. Okay. It, even dimensions, yeah, case, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, cutoff dependent. I mean, in the case of all dimensions, you also have the kind of dependence, right? I mean, just say uh, no, no, no. we scale separate. Yeah, but it's a linear divergence, so you can separate these two guys. Right, but so suppose I have the law, and then I so yeah, decide to regularize the problem. Yeah, if you have a logarithmic problem. Yeah, but uh, in, um, in, in smooth boundary choice of boundary of A, there are no logarithmic term here in okay. all the dimension. So that's right. case is okay. So in the case of even dimensions, so suppose I say decide to do the computation in a say very precise way, just you know, say specify yeah. the regularizations in very well. Uh -huh. Um then you know, say presumably I can really say define the constant term, right? Just, you know, in a very yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. unambiguous yeah, yeah. way. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true, that's true. But uh, it's I mean what the meaning of epsilon is right depend on the person right, who you ask us here. Basically. So for your particular choice of epsilon, anyway, you can define log of L over epsilon, right? And then you can, yeah, you can claim other term is this guy. That's right. And so still that term does not seem to have any same meaning or? Any yeah, but, but uh, anyway, you can define this for your regularization, but if you choose other regularization, this value changes, right? Yes. Right. So that means, you know, it's not, that means it's not so easy to, you know, have a definite meaning of this okay. key. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now let me okay. And so what I wanted to do next is like uh, yeah, give some quick derivation of a holographic entanglement entropy. So this is uh done. Oh. 
my not famous work. Try to quit and all the same. But I'm giving a very brief version of this. All the same. Okay. But if you are more, you look into, you want to look into details, please refer to the original paper. I, I will just give some heuristic sketch how we can understand this. So this is, yeah, I just gave some minimal surface formula, but the, of course it should be derived, you know, in basic principle of ADSF, namely equivalence of partition functions. So how we can do this? But this is not so, actually, uh, not so difficult. So we have a subsystem A is here, right? And uh, we have like a minimal surface here, gamma A. And uh, po but the point is that we all, we can always get back to the calculation of entanglement by using replicatory, right? So we we go we we go trace row A to the Ns, right? We compute the N and the one to the Ns, right? And the N CFT is like this exponential I G N. So this is a CFT partition function is computed by, this is just gravity partition function, this is gravity. This is an area safety principle, product to boundary relation. Gravity partition function. Partition function. And uh, so that means, so for replicatory, what replicatory means we, we have an N copy of right, seats. That means actually if we write this single seat, so we have like n two pi n periodicity, right? You can remember, right? Previous, uh, I mean, the seat geometry. Like if we go, so if we go around, then go next to seat and n times, and then after m times you go back. Right? That means you you have two pi n periodicity. Right? So we can have two pi n periodicity, and let's assume that we extend the geometry towards the bulk, right? This is the philosophy of area safety. So naively we we expect you know somehow two pi n is uh, periodicity is happening everywhere, right, along this surface, gamma A. But actually, this is not true, because if we have a 2 pi n periodicity, it means conical deficit angle, conical geometry, and singular geometry. So, but the solution, conical, uh, singular solution is not solution to Einstein equation. We, we have to smooth this out. But uh, this smoothing procedure, we can easily show this smoothing procedure does not change the result. Actually, it's a, if we only look into account, uh, look into uh, von Neumann entropy, not Lenny entropy, then we can neglect this difference. We can just talk about the singular geometry and evaluate, you know, this IG gravity action, and this gives a correct answer. The main reason is that n equal one, right? Von Neumann entropy is n equal one limit, and n equal one limit uh, background already satisfied, you know, equation motion. It's just a pure ADS, right? And small perturbation around equation solution to equation motion is always appeared quadratic order of this uh, gravity action, right? Any action. Or Lagrangian. It's always quadratic over because linear order is vanishes because solution satisfies the equation motion. So that way, and uh, for Honneim entropy, this linear order is in, in, uh, I mean, enough to calculate. So we, we can neglect this higher order corrections. Okay, so then, but anyway, we can, so we can uh, vary this, this guy and it looks like this, you know, minus, uh, oh, sorry. This looks like, uh, okay equal to minus 16 pi g newton and square root g. And this is just standard Einstein Hill reduction with cosmological constant, there are other terms. But other terms don't contribute. And this is equal, right? So you can, and if you have some this deficit angle, so this deficit angle, deficit angle, it looks like two pi one minus 10. You know, deficit angle, it's a negative angle is like this. So that case, each scalar in this background looks like four pi, you know, for pi one minus n and delta functionally localized on this gamma a. Right? So you can, this is a, you can prove precisely. This is just a geometrical formula for this sheet angle. So you can just plug this here in here. And this term don't, don't contribute actually. It gives a very trivial contribution. So if we do that, then you get n minus one for g newton and it's integral is full space is localized on gamma a right? because of delta function, right? So you, you, you have conical angle only at this point, this is a gamma A point, right, along this line. So, you know, delta functionally, curvature is delta functionally localized here. And this so is square root of G, and there are some, these contributions, but this there always N times something, 
Like anytime something does not contribute to entropy, it's extensive. This is quite extensive. And then finally, this entanglement entropy is computed as log the n z1 to the nth power. And this is computed. So you can just take the derivative of this guy and the minus sign, but you have minus sign, but this is also minus sign, they canceled. And in the end, you get 4G Newton and divided by, uh, sorry, 4G Newton and the integral of gamma A, right? So this is just area, right? Area of gamma A and 4G Newton. This is all, almost same, right? Of holographic entanglement entropy. But so one more thing is we need to impose, right? Impose Einstein equation. For smooth geometry. But this is exactly usually the same as this gravity action. With some, you can assume some, you know, under of solution, and we take a variation about parameter, and this variation of principle should be zero. So this means, in our language, it, 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 this means area should be minimized, right? Variation. So this is equivalent to Einstein equation. So of course, details are more complicated. You, you should study, you know, carefully. But this is a rough sketch. So in this way, anyway, we, we find this photographic entanglement. In, in this way, so SA equal to minimize. Minimization of area of gamma A divided by holding Newton. Okay. So this is a, a quick summary how we can derive this formula. Okay. <coughs> okay, so now we go to a second formula. Okay. C5, photographic entanglement entropy and version. So, uh, for that, let's consider. So, so previous so far we only restrict a particular case, namely static space time. Right. So now we want that time dependent setup. Right. Consider a low range setup. Low range and time dependent background. Time dependent dependent background. So this is actually the whole time more general time defense case. We need a, another formula, which is time covariant formula, version two. This is a, a also called the covariant entanglement. Covariant photographic entanglement entropy. This is some something I worked with uh Hubeni, Veronica Hubeni and Lukundra Hamani. And so the answer to this question of what about in a time dependent case is very simple, um, but it's a little bit more complicated than the previous formula. So we need a two step minimization and extremization. And point is that we are basically the same formula, you know, basically the same formula area divided by whole Newton. And but first we extremize the uh, surface and finally if we have several candidates we you know <laughs> pick up minimum and this extremalize this extremalize this so extremalize huh? okay and uh, so this means that we compute area area and take a variation set to the code zero right this is a variation and uh, yeah, okay. And uh, so if there are some candidate minima, minimize, minimize areas uh, among extremal surface. Such a surface, you know, extremal area means it's called extremal surface. The reason we have to, you know, extremal, not minimize, is, is just very simple because we have time direction, right? We cannot restrict some, uh, I mean, here we cannot restrict to uh, time slice because uh, uh, space time is time, time dependent. Right? There are no canonical time slice. So we can talk about subsystem A and we can talk about, you know, minimal surface like uh, extremal surface. Gamma A is extreme. extreme. And uh, 
So we cannot minimize because if we talk about you know, null direction, right, area is zero, that means maybe minimize, but null surface is not, not relevant for this question of entropy. If entropy is zero, right? It's a, I mean, area is zero, so it's, it's not interesting. So we just pick up some extremal surface, but sometimes we have several candidates of this extremal surface. In that case, we just we take minimum. Yeah, we just pick up minimum one. So this is a, the second minimum. The, the crucial this procedure is this extremalization. Okay. So this is a covariant uh, formulation. But actually, for covariant perturbation formulation, there are equivalent, but another formulation. This is HEE. HEE, -E, this is a version 2.1. I just said 2.1. This is formed, formed by Alan Wall. This is equivalent. This is what I should say. This is equivalent. Equivalent to HEE -E, version 2. But this is more difficult to calculate but uh, more easy to prove some theorems. So this is first, uh, it's the opposite. I will first uh, take a minimum and later maximum. So area of gamma A, sigma I will explain the definition, but divided by coordinate looks very similar. First, we minimize uh, like this. So what I mean is just first anyway, we pick up, so here I mean for a fixed, for a fixed, Fixed a sigma. There's a time, some time slice. Let's take some time slice. So we maybe I can write a picture. A picture here. Uh, we have like this, and here it's time dependent. So we, we are, but anyway, we are interested in particular time slice. This is time slice, boundary time slice, boundary boundary time slice slice, and we can extend this towards the bar. Right? And there are many different ways. It's time dependent case that there are no canonical one. We just pick up one of them, one of time slice, time slice, which is called sigma. So uh, for sigma, so we can talk about this and then we can talk about subsystem A, right? So we can talk about subsystem A here, subsystem A and calculate uh, minimal surface. This is a, so only the minimal surface restricted to this, you know, time, time slice sigma, right? This is a special surface, so we can minimize area, right, reliably. So this minimal surface is called gamma A, but it also depends on sigma. So I write it to gamma A sigma, okay? And then, so this is, a, this is it, right? This is it. And uh, this procedure we explain, so we minimize surface, and then later we, so because the result depend on of sigma, so we take a maximization about sigma. So this is a final procedure. This is highly non-trivial, right? So we maximize. The reason why we maximize, because if you have some you know, minimal surface like this, go if we move this way or deform this way, area gets decreased. Area gets, sorry, area gets larger because this is minimal surface, right? But if we go time-like direction, if we start with this, this surface and go to time-like way, like this way, then area gets decreased, I'm saying, because you can, you know, imagine this, you know, like D brain, for example, action, like motion, like D, D square, but uh, I mean, so, so not, not so like, this, but yeah, yeah, X square, and the, yeah, so yeah, maybe, yeah, I should write it this way. So this square, uh, there, the tx mu square, like this, this is a perturbation, it looks like this, right? And the, because signature is negative, right? This zero direction is minus, but plus x1 direction square, right? This is minus means, you know, if we perturb in time direction, then, you know, area decreases. So we have to maximize. So that's the reason we have maximize. This is a time-like deformation, basically. So, so this is time-like. A deformation. So this is a space like deformation, basically. So I can explain the one example why this formula also very, very nice. You know, useful. It's like just actually derivation of strong subjectivity. 
SSA. I write it just SSA, strong subjectivity, SSA. And, uh, but this is more complicated in time dependent background. We cannot restrict to start simple setup, but I, nevertheless, we can prove it. Uh, okay, so for that, let's write it. So we have like this. Uh, okay. We have one more. Okay. And we want to derive a uh, strong subjectivity. Sorry, let me write it into it more. Okay. So uh, we, we, we start with some, you know, some time slice, which I write it with green color. And so we have like this. And we have, let's see, we have like this time slice, okay. And so we write it the same time slice here. This is time slice. Time slice at the boundary is quite well defined. But uh, there are many, many different ways to extend the bar. This is just one choice sigma. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have like ABC, right? So we have ABC again. So we have uh, uh, A, B, C. And I don't know how to use what kind of corruption. Yeah, so yeah, OK. We have this. We have this. And uh, we can write it uh, this A and B and C, OK? And uh, so first, let's start with a uh, opposite way, right? Opposite way that namely, uh, we start with SABC plus SB. We start, let's start with this. So first of all, B, gamma B is very easy, right? Gamma B is very easy, this guy, this gamma B. And uh, gamma AC is like, ABC is like this. So the point is that, so actually I, I'm explaining the opposite. So, so anyway, we have some extremal surface which gives SB, right? This is extremal surface and SBC is given by this extremal surface. Then once we have these two different extremal surfaces, we can choose uh, this surface sigma such that this sigma also intersect both of them, right? The, both, both of this guy and this guy is on this surface sigma. We can always find such a sigma. But the problem is that this kind of procedure is not possible if we have some intersecting. If two guys are intersecting, we cannot find these two guys are not always intersecting this point. You know, it's it's go like this or like this, and there are no intersection. In that case, we cannot set you know prepare one single surface sigma so that both of them are situated on that. It's not possible. But the opposite side, this guy is possible because it's a, these two guys are not you know. It's quite separated, right? not intersecting. And then, anyway, on this slice, we can use the same procedure which I explained before. So we can talk about, you know, like ABC. Uh, we can talk about ABC. A, B, sorry, sorry. A, A, B, C. We can talk about ABC. Uh, we can do this. What we do is, uh, we can we can choose some surface, right? So that it's really interesting because it's on sigma. So we don't know what kind of surface this is, but we can just call it this this surface. A, it covers A B, right? So A B, A B. This is A B B C. This is B C. Gamma A B and B C. But we put a prime because this is not not uh, uh, that one. This is not uh, correct surface. But anyway, we can show this is always true. Right? So this would be on the BC. This surface area, is, we call just S prime, B prime, S prime BC. This is not entanglement area. These two guys are just artificial quantity, just defined by area of the surface, okay? But finally, actually, we, we, we should find some actual correct minimal surface, right? Correct, correct minimal surface, which actually looks like this way, this way. Like this. Oh, sorry, sorry, this is not, not exactly true. Sorry, this is some surface which covers AB, right? Some external surface which covers uh, BC, like this. And this is a gamma, uh, true surface gamma AB and true surface gamma BC, right? And uh, so that means, and uh, these two, two are related by time, different time like deformation, which I explained. 
And so that is always uh, gets larger, right? We get a, uh, this is a real extremal surface, which means maximize. Right? This maximization is already taken. This maximization is already taken. So it looks like this inequality looks like this SAB and BC is uh, always bounded like this way. Okay. And uh, so that this way we can prove, you know, this is strong subjectivity because this guy is smaller than this one. Okay. So this is a, uh, so by using this formula, we can derive strong subjectivity, but this formula is actually equivalent to this formula. Okay. So now I, as a final topic of this lecture, this second lecture of mine, I would like to introduce uh, maybe fourth or third formula for an holographic entanglement, some kind of generalized version of holographic entanglement, which I call version three. And uh, this is based on the following question that, so, so far we discussed, you know, static space time, right? Static space time and the low range and time dependent setup. But what about uh, Euclidean time dependent background? Euclidean, Euclidean time dependent background. Then, then background. Time dependent background, what about this? Then, so, we can write it with some picture uh, like this. Okay, so this is like this. And so what that you mean? This is now time direction is Euclidean time. Tau, tau is Euclidean time. The time dependent. And we have some time slice, time slice like here. And we have uh, region A, somehow region A is here, right? And we can, and uh, but we have non-trivial time dependence, so that means some space time is something like this. Some time dependent is there, and then we talk about uh, uh, extremal surface, right? Uh, sorry, in this case we can define minimal surface, minimal surface, minimal surface, because this is everything is Euclidean, so we can define minimal surface, minimal area surface, and namely so, some we don't know what this one, but equal to some minimal surface gamma a divided by area gamma a divided by 4g newton okay divided by 4g this is just same formula right? this is true for static case. static case this is just reduced to holographic entanglement entropy but if we talk about time dependent euclidean time dependent background what does this mean right so this is a so far open open problem okay i will answer this question but anyway so uh, this quantity looks like this we have the end of the Right, end point of A, right? We just uh, extend, well, maybe just partial A, boundary of A, it's like extend further. And there are non trivial uh, minimal surface, right? Minimal surface. Now, this, the question is whether, what this quantity means, right? This area means. And here I, I will give this answer to this question. So actually, the answer is something we need to go beyond uh, entanglement. You have to generalize. Uh, quantity. So this is something what we call is something called holographic holographic Russell pseudo entropy. So so this is this is based on my recent work with uh, okay let me write it with Taki Tamaoka and Nakata and the uh, uh, way and myself and this is last year okay and uh, so so yeah the question is that what this quantity right this minimal area in time dependent euclidean background means and this is a very basic question and uh, this is actually answer is like this i can give an answer here so this is, we first introduce some analog of reduced density matrix but it's more we have to go beyond that so this is like actually given by this non-trivial transition matrix, Psi one and Psi two, Psi one, two, Psi two and Psi one like this. And uh, we have B and uh, yeah. So this is the initial state, initial state. Sorry, uh, 
So this is a, uh, so we have some two states and the first one is the initial state, initial state. And the second one is final state, final state. And uh, the reason why we write this is like this. So we have like some area safety setup and we have Z direction and we have uh, T tau equal zero surface and the uh, and we have some non-trivial time dependence like this and the so we have like because of this time dependence you know asymptotically so we prepare non-trivial pass integral here non-trivial pass integral here and this first one prepare some state which we call this initial state psi one right and another pass integral prepares another state called psi two right so this psi and psi two are different so that's the reason we have like this uh, transition matrix structure right this is transition which we call transition matrix and we trace out b and so we this is what we call reduced reduced transition matrix And so then what we can calculate is uh, like this, trace row of tau. And this is a von Neumann entropy like quantity, but this is something we call the shield entropy. And so the claim is that this quantity is coincide the minimum area, which I explain area a gamma okay so because of this time dependence no this minimal surface is no longer uh no longer like this no longer on the time slice but it's like extended this way ah, sorry. like this way so this area actually uh, picks up a uh, very non-trivial time dependence like this, non-trivial time dependence like this, and uh, calculate this area. That uh, means calculating this, uh, some new quantity, which we write it here. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's now, I think we're almost done. Almost done. And uh, so a few comments, it's, that this this quantity if you comment uh, first if if uh, of course psi one and psi two are same also this is true for static background or maybe other situation. In this case then, uh, this pseudo entropy is actually equal to standard von Neumann entropy, right? Low A is just defined, so let's be and the Psi one, and the Psi one, this is because same, right? And this is inner product is just one. So we just talk about Psi one and Psi one, like this, okay? And so, Yeah, this we can regard this quantity as a um, some generalization of entanglement entropy. So indeed, if we talk about the static space time, this reduced to standard holographic entanglement entropy. And in general, this pseudo entropy, I just write T V or S Tawa Tawe, it takes takes complex value. But the reason, complex value, the reason is that very simple because tau a, because this, because tau a is not a Hermitian. So it's like generically, even though it looks like von Neumann entropy, this takes, uh, this quantity takes in general, uh, complex value. 
But nevertheless, uh, because of this, you know, special setup of holography, or you, if we talk about some uh, de description of a quantum state by using Euclidean path integral, because path integral, Euclidean path integral, if external field are all real, it's like real, real value. So that gives real value uh, to show the entropy. And that's of course consistent with holographic calculation because area is always positive and real. But in more general case, we can take uh, complex values. Okay. Okay. So I think, uh, yeah, I, I have still five minutes, but maybe it's good to have a question. So I, I think I will stop here for this uh, lecture. And uh, tomorrow I will continue with the entanglement wedges and the boundary conformity theory. Thank yeah, you, Dr. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, there's questions. Uh, yes, can I ask you a question? Sure, sure, sure. Yes, uh, so it's actually, uh, I want to ask this question, uh, I mean, after the lecture in the morning, but it's lunchtime. So sorry if I ask like uh, later. Um, my question is, um, so basically, because uh, I mean, we, we are considering the entanglement of the field theory, uh, continu continuous degrees of freedom. And because there is a, a, a vacuum fluctuation, so of course, a quantum theory of a uh, system of continuous degrees of freedom, we have to, we have divergence and we have to renormalize. And uh, uh, in fact, for, uh, and, and for the area law, uh, the entanglement entropy of, of the vacuum states, uh, we have a divergence. Uh, and but but I feel the situation is quite different from what we have like in a traditional like a uh, quantum field theory which is designed for I mean for maybe for particle physics. So in that case, uh, for example, if we consider scattering problem, this mm. kind of problem, we also have uh, divergences. Uh, for example, if we want to compute uh, scattering amplitudes or cross cross section, we have the uh, divergence. We have to uh, renormalize. Uh, with the renormalization point of like some physical mm -hmm. meaning, like physical mass, physical charge, etc. So here, uh, it seems we are like we 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 have the area the area divergence is like uh, it's the entanglement of the vacuum state, mm -hmm. and if we want to add excitation, for example, particle excitation, we we'll put two particles, two electrons. Uh, it doesn't change the leading order, I believe, mm -hmm. because as you said, local, it doesn't change. So I'm wondering yeah. if mm -hmm. there is any physical quantities we can consider, like entanglement of the excitations modular the contribution of the vacuum and somehow it can be renormalized with respect to the uh, physical charge mass or physical uh, uh, parameters of the particle excitation. Mm. Okay, but uh, anyway, if we talk mm -hmm. about excitation, right, we, we can talk about mm -hmm. excitation and then entanglement mm -hmm. entropy sifted by finite amount. And this finite amount, maybe you can regard it's a kind of renormalized quantity. Okay. Because you take a difference between original divergence, right? ADR or divergence. Okay. This is called also uh, renormalized entanglement entropy, actually. I, I see, I see. So, uh, has there been any uh, has the, has there been any work on this kind of uh, thing? Uh, yeah, I think you can search about the keyword that renormalizes the entanglement entropy. Renormalized. Okay. Uh, uh. So people try to get rid of you know divergence. D divergence. And that's and a, yeah, that's a, in photography. It's like photographic renormalization basically. Uh, uh. I see. I see. Yeah, we can do it. But in that case, you get, for example, negative entropy or right? that kind of oh. it's difficult to interpret, to be honest. But uh, anyway, you can always renormalize entropy and get oh, finite okay. quantity. Oh, OK. OK. Thank you. Uh, can I Any other question? Uh, can I ask one? Sure. Uh, uh... In the uh, last of your talk, uh, you mentioned about uh, pseudo entropy and its uh, gravity yes. law. Yeah. And uh, is there uh, any proof 
using a GKP weighting relation? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is, I mean, proof is basically the same as Blukowitz and Maldacena, which I just oh. gave. Uh, because exactly, yeah, basically exactly the same. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can introduce some deficit angle also here, right? Along this 2 pi n. And uh, this crucial relation is like each curvature looks like 4 pi, 1 minus n, and delta functionally localized. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so you can just plug, then you can derive this. Uh, and the point is here, not the point is that, uh, anyway, we, we have some replica calculation, replicatory calculation. And that already tells us this. Uh, reduced transition matrix, shape of this matrix. Mm -hmm. And because replica, if you do the replica calculation, so we have like this, this kind of setup, right? As I explained. And you have some initial, uh, sorry. You have like, you know, initial state here, and you have a final state here. And then because they, you can talk about, in general, different path integral here and here, right? Because time dependence. So then you can, for example, insert some operator here, but the only one operator here, then you, you prepare two different states. And, uh, but the replica trick itself is the same. So that's the reason why you, we can apply this loop to Maldacena derivation of holographic entanglement entropy to holographic pursued entropy. Uh, well, do you need to assume uh, the smoothness of boundary? Smoothness of boundary, uh, so sorry, which boundary are you talking uh, about? The, I mean the uh, partial A. Ah, yeah, well, yeah, not necessarily. You can talk about singular boundary, but in that case, you get the extra divergence. Uh -huh. So, for example, yeah, okay, so that's actually somehow I didn't mention, but uh, this is important actually. So, we, we talk about like higher dimensional homophilicity results, like d minus two, and I said something like this, right? d minus four, right? This area of divergence, there are another divergence. Subreading them and so on. But uh, if you have, like, for example, cusp, right? If you have a subsystem A has a cusp, like angle, right? Then you have an intermediate time, right? L over epsilon d minus uh, three, actually. This term appears. And it's, it's still okay. I mean, you can you know, apply this holographic formula even if you have a singularity, singular shape of, you know, cusp like singularity of subsystem A, but you behavior, little bit changes, uh, you get uh, some divergence, extra divergence. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm. Thank you. Uh, hi, Professor Takayanagi. Hello, yeah. Hello, yeah, I have a, a kind of naive question. So sure. is yeah, it possible no to uh, weak rotate this pseudo entropy to give some physical result in Lorentzian space time? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, um, uh, what the, uh, yeah, uh, I, I mean, always you can, you know, uh, we rotate, you know, time direction, real time direction, and uh, yeah. to calculate, you know, quantity in time dependent background. And but still, in that case, you, you have two different time dependent state here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, you can we, do we, it. Uh, and, but uh, one, one, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, one comment is that so yeah. So yeah, I can explain one uh, situation that, for example, you, if you took a rotating black hole, right? You you have a rotating black hole in ADS, and that is fine for Lorentzian signature, right? And you can calculate holographic entanglement entropy and covariant entanglement entropy. We give it some just a standard quantity. But you, if we go to uh, time uh, weak rotation, if we do weak rotation, th then to go to Euclidean signature, then you get uh, some complex valued metric, actually. Right? Rotating black hole has a complex valued metric. And in that case, we can do the same procedure of this, you know, uh, pursued entropy. And then you get a complex, this case, complex valued entropy and pursued entropy, you will get. Uh, I see. Uh, so that means, right, so originally, so we start with some time-dependent background and we interpret the entanglement entropy, just the time-dependent entanglement entropy, which is real value. But now we go to different quantity because it's complex value. I see, I see. Uh, so that, that sense, this, uh, this prescription, something, you know, new to, you know, existing, you know, standard holographic entanglement entropy for time-dependent setup. Uh -huh. 
Uh, okay, I see. Thank you. Professor, can I ask you another question? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think uh, before you, in your presentation, I mean, the, the area law works for the uh, vacuum states, but you mm -hmm. also mentioned for other states, maybe that's the volume law. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm yeah. wondering mm -hmm. if there's also a holographic uh, description for the volume law. For... Ah, volume law, okay. Uh, volume law divergence is really not trivial. I mean, it changes the asymptotic ADS property. So you, we have to, mm -hmm. so what, what I want to say is mm -hmm. uh, we have some Z direction. Right? And if you talk about ADS space, right? ADS, mm -hmm. asymptotically ADS. Mm -hmm. then, then always, if we correct the entanglement, it's always area law. This is area law. However, if we talk about, for example, flat space, flat space. Because of the warp factor, right? The z square and the dx square, like this is area space, right? And the only the divergence only I mean, important uh, appears in this uh, small z direction, right? UV direction. And if we talk about flat space, like dx square is like dz square and dx square, then you will find volume law. You will find volume law. This is very easy, right? Because uh, you talk about the uh, minimal surface here, right? Then it's uh, just go this way, right? Minimal surface go tends to go inside for ADS, but it just coincides with A, right? For flat space, right? It's uh, minimal surface trivial, so it's problem. But the problem is that uh, we don't know much about holography for flat space, so we expect that kind of very non-local theory. This is due to some non-local theory. Local the quantum field theory, but uh, we don't know, know so much. But uh, if we admit this kind of relation, uh, long ago I wrote a paper with Wei about this uh, non local quantum field theory and dual to flat space. And that case, you can derive volume law. This is one, one answer to your question, but this is, has a, some, you know, some something we don't know, also includes something we don't know. But an another answer. So your question is more standard setup of ADS FT, but with some black hole, right? We have black hole, ADS black hole. This is the direction. This is the ADS black hole, right? And then minimal surface, this is a boundary, ADS boundary. And then if we calculate holographic entanglement data bits, you know, minimal surface tend to wrap, wrap on the horizon, right? So then entanglement entropy has a standard UV divergence. Uh, D minus two, but there are some finite contribution, which is very important. So it is proportional to volume. This is a volume. Uh, it's a volume, volume of A. This is finite contribution, this is proportional to volume of A. And uh, so this is some reading contribution, but maybe you can imagine, right? It's not, not the radius is not so valid, but uh, if these two guys are same order, right? Assuming this cutoff is going down, Maybe cutoff going down or A goes to very large, then you, you can you know say this volume term, you can say this volume term is dominant, then you know we get the volume law. So anyway, it's like a very high temperature phase, which is I mean they're highly excited states. Highly excited okay, states. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Ah, this is song. Ah, so, uh, yeah, I saw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is there any, could you comment, uh, is there any corresponding pseudo modular Hamiltonian picture for the pseudo entropy or ah, something okay. like that? Yeah, you can define, yeah, modular Hamiltonian, some analog modular Hamiltonian. So we have, uh, sorry, we have, let's see, we have like tau A, we have tau A equal to trace B, right? And psi one, psi two, psi one, psi one. And right, this is the definition of transition, but we can define exponential of maybe some analog of modular Hamiltonian. But this is not, not the Hamiltonian, right? Yeah, yeah. So how about the modular, modular parameter? The modular parameter? Yeah. It's, low, uh, it's a complex mm. number or? Uh, this, you mean, you're talking about eigen value of HA? Yeah. Uh, that's the generic complex value, yes. Oh. And so this is called entanglement spectrum, right? This becomes complex period. Right. 
But nevertheless, formally we can derive like you, you know this first law of entanglement entropy, right? right. So it's like uh, uh, entanglement entropy is pro, uh, basically the same as uh, modular Hamiltonian expectation value, and this is also true for our case. So uh, we can talk about a uh, sorry tau a s tau a tau is a transition matrix. This is actually the same as this. Uh, let's call this prime, right? Because this one is from basically you, you can show this this kind of First row. So that sense may be somehow useful for this, this guy. Okay. This, uh, so, so, so you can also define the associate with the relative entropy. So those yeah, 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 yeah. You can define some pseudo entropy version of relative entropy. Yeah, but, but the monotonic behavior for the for the pseudo entropy will be breakdown because, hmm. because here is a complex number. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure about the monotonicity and such inequalities, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, for example, strong subrelativity can be violated. Uh -huh. for pseudo entropy. Also, subrelativity also can be violated. I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, there are some questions in the chat. Ah, yeah, uh, let's see. Okay, I missed this. Uh, actually, there are many, maybe. Ah, okay, this one, sorry. Okay. Ah, okay, so re let me go go to this chat. And the first question is, uh, is there any quick in intuition why there are no uh, wire anomaly in odd dimension? Uh, yeah, anyway, we, we cannot write down the yeah, correct term for um, trace anomaly. Right? So it's T, T mu one, one. There are, I think, many answers to this question. But uh, so you can also you know, derive this in, from area safety. So you can talk about just volume of anti Doshita space. And uh, all the dimensions, there are no logarithmic divergence. But the, you know, even dimension, you get the logarithmic divergence. But in field theory side, so we have we have some right. I mean, trace anomaly come from trace of energy string tensor, and uh, in general we expect something, some something like some sum of a central charge, and some you know function of R curvature, right? Curvature, some curvature. There are no other good quantity, right? To uh, to write down a wire anomaly, basically. Right. So then, but this is a dimension two, right? Dimension two, coverage is dimension two. So, you know, now this is dimension, dimension D, right? Dimension D. So, you know, and uh, this is conformal field theory. So, you know, this should be dimensionless. Central charge, of course, dimension zero. So then, you know, only if this is even, we can find, you know, some, you can imagine some power of R, you know, is balanced with dimension D. So then this should be even. This is one, one answer to this question. What are the physical meanings of the various coefficients of the subleading parallel divergent terms in the in, ah, okay, in good, good. So, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand the question. So that's actually so for example, like this, right? So this one is area, right? This area row, area. And this is probably related to some it's basically uh, so area means you know integral of G, right? Area, right? This is I think yeah, some curvature integrated on bar because dimension. Two is reduced, right? And that way. So if we talk about L over epsilon d minus six, basically it's like R square. I don't know the detail, detail, you know, how contract in that sense, but like this. Is this clear? Right, but what about the meaning of the coefficients? Yeah, so coefficient means this, this one, and geometrical curvature. This coefficient of L over epsilon, its meaning is like given by this. I see, thanks. Huh. So that's say, purely geometrical. Uh, right, purely geometrical. That's right. That's right. Only finite term or logarithmic, uh, only logarithmic coefficient of logarithmic term and finite contribution has a non trivial meaning, to be honest. Um, the leading term, um, the leading divergent, that also sort of come the number of degrees freedom in the field theory? Yeah, yeah, degree of freedom, but it's just very geometrical, right? And more details are geometrical. Just uh, one number which characterizes degree of freedom times just area. This part is 
very simple, right? Even if you change the shape, you don't get any interesting information. You only get this coefficient. I see. But the uh, final constant term is non-local, so it's highly non-trivially dependent on the geometry. I see. So one has cusp, so does that encode anything? Uh, cusp, so yeah, yeah. cusp also, uh, good question. Yeah, yeah. Cusp also gives some non-trivial, yeah, depending on the angle, cusp angle, you, you get a non-trivial function of angle, actually. I think that's also, yeah, in, interesting quantity. I see, so mm. basically, the interesting thing is about the geometry, but now say something more physical about the field theory itself. Yours. Yeah, 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 I think so. Mm. Okay, thanks. And also there are pursued entropy uh, right hand side. There is a what? Where is the state dependence? Right hand side pursued entropy. Uh, state yeah state dependence maybe a uh, whole. Huh? I think this probably talk about the holographic calculation, right? And of course. Uh, the should entropy definition involves two states, right? Point is that in entanglement entropy only fixed by one state, but the uh, should entropy will have to specify two different states, initial state and the final state. And the tau depend on this both of them. Entropy also, of course depend on both of them. In holographic side, because of non-trivial geometry, right? You can have a, this part, area geometry and later part of geometry, they, each of them de determine this in you know, psi one. Initial geometry determines initial state and Little time geometry determine the final state. So both have a I mean, non trivial dependence each side. I hope this is clear. And there are one more question that, I, okay, flat space holography proposal of integrating ADS and DS size uh -huh, by Young Advoir and Sorodoki might help. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm not so much familiar with the, uh, this and Bo and Sodokin's proposal. I remember I wrote, I wrote read the paper but long ago, but I don't so much uh, precisely remember. But uh, yeah, I, I think there are many approaches to, uh, I mean, photography for flat space. And uh, yeah, another approach is you know looking at uh, more recent approach, looking at the S matrix right in Lorentz and geometry, so that narrow boundary, narrow infinity. We can have some symmetry and so on. I think Strominger and the collaborator are working on that. That's another one story. And also, this it was Sudokin's approach, also something I like guess. Also, I have a, uh, some other approach using Euclidean space. But I think so far, it's not so much clear. I mean, how, what, how you know, uh, holography in flat space works. Uh, so, yeah, I can only comment that. So, anyway, any approach should, yeah, should be helpful. But it's really, really a developing subject. So, uh, presumably, just say looking at the page right now, um, if I, you know, so suppose I say come up with a toy model that I can solve say exactly, which is an interacting theory, then presumably those coefficients all depends on the properties in the theory. I, guess. I mean, imagine what is able to do the computation. Uh, so, 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 I, 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 get, I can't get the point. So, could you explain again? Sure, sure. I mean, just you know, just on this page, for example, all those six coefficients of the parallel divergent, parallel divergent terms in the entanglement huh. entropy. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, one, you mean this divergence? Yeah. Right. If what I mean, if one is able to find an interacting theory to do the computation hmm. uh, precisely, then presumably those coefficients would depend on the inter. I mean, depend on the coupling constants in that theory, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Because the degree, degree of freedom, right? I, I mean, itself depends on the coupling constant. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. But uh, I mean, I, I'm talking dependence of shape of subsystem is very simple here. Right? This, these are very simple. Right. Okay. I, I, I think you are, yeah, okay. I, I think you are talking about this this coefficient, right? This coefficient times the total of area of divergence. So we have always area, right? But you are talking about this guy, right? This is well, something you can do. I'm talking about the hashtag. Now. Well, that, hmm. uh, yeah, I'm talking about that, that, you know, that particular sign, I mean, the quantity in front of the power, um, the, the power of average. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, pa power or divergence. Right, I'm, I, I'm missing ah, all these coefficients. Okay. Uh, I'm, I, 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 I'm only saying, so presumably these coefficients depend on all the quantities, um, for example, the renormalized couplings of the theory. Um, mm. I mean, right. Yeah. Mm, sorry, I still I don't understand so much where your question is. So, yeah, this uh, no, you're talking about these, these coefficients, right? These, these coefficients, right? Yes, yes, precisely. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are they... mm. Right. So, 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 so it, um, just so not only say, for example, um, um, the say the C function and say the F. Mm. C function. The F function encodes mm. the physical properties of field theory, but all these coefficients presumably. Uh, encode something, you know, more, you know, sort of more fine-grained information of the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The physics. Uh, the, more more fine-grained. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I understand your point. Yeah, but so far, I should say, I think people didn't dis uh, discover these coefficients are monotonically decreasing or such a property. I think probably sure. these are not uh -huh. monotonically decreasing. Right, okay, they may not be say related to say uh, some some uh, some uh, uh, anomalies of the theory, but to, to mm. something. yeah, but uh, it, it is true. So this these are meaning of these coefficients as some interesting probably application in Zen, but I not 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 understood so much. I should say. Okay, thanks. Mm. Excuse me. Yes. Sure, sure. About the derivation of. All right. Entanglement entropy formula. Yeah. Where, uh, it seems like you have used the replica method. Mm. And isn't that method, uh, isn't that method assuming a pure state? Ah, okay. Uh, no, not necessarily. I, I think you are talking about uh, this. Is, uh, sorry, not not good to shape. Sorry. Let me see. And I, I think you are talking about this one, right? I think this one, right? You're talking derivation, right? And so here we only use the path integral description. So we don't need to restrict actually to mix uh, pure states. As a, maybe I can just a little bit explain this. Uh, okay. So yeah, so far anyway. Yeah, main part of my talk, I'm focused on pure state, that's true. So for pure state, we can talk about replicatory like this, right? So we have a path integral infinitely long time, and we have we have like, uh, we prepare many reduced density matrix, right? And yes. uh, we, we paste with each other, right? So we paste this guy with this guy, and this guy, the other guy, and finally we end up with this, right? And this, uh, make, this means that we have a geometry like this, uh, this is a boundary of ADS, and it's like 2 pi n, right? Is this okay? Yep. Yeah. And then we ex okay. extend this, you know, I mean, deficit angle, 2 pi n periodicity in the bulk, gamma. Mm -hmm. But I think your question is, well, what about the, uh, a mixed state, right? Yes. So for me, one typical, uh, 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 it, it is true, so we cannot uh, analyze all mixed state. We, only talk, we can only talk about a very special class of mixed state. Namely, the one, the ones which we can realize using path integral. Right? Always yeah. path integral is related to ADSFT, like geometry. Right? Geometry of ADSFT always come from Euclidean path integral. That is usually true. So one I mean, important example, which we know very well, is like the finite temperature, right? I mean, this, this I mean, so canonical ensemble, right? This one. Yes. So let me talk about this, right? So this case is we just have a beta periodicity. And in that case, we create some uh, cut, right? So we have this region A here, right? This cylinder. This cylinder basically calculates this, right? This is low. And low A means we just trace our B, right? And we calculate trace low A to the nth power, right? This we can do by preparing this, you know, cylinder, many, many such cylinders, you know, paste to each other, right? And we... Okay. Yeah, we paste this guy with this guy, right? And, and so on. And finally, go like this. 
And so this guy also have a, a, a holographic version. So we can have, so boundary geometry looks like cylinder now, right? And then we can talk about subsystem A here, right? But you can talk about this also ADS, right? This is global ADS looks like this geometry. And you can, ah, sorry, black hole geometry, BTZ black hole is like this geometry. And uh, maybe, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not, okay. Uh, if I write a metric expression, it's like this. It's a phi direction in this direction. I said, this is actually, no, this is a tau direction, Euclidean time direction. It's a Euclidean time direction. And this is a radial direction. This is a uh, phi direction. But anyway, yeah, and uh, so we can extend, and we can extend this, you know, deficit angle surface in the bulk and going back. And then, you know, other analysis is the same, right? Exactly the same. Same as this analysis. A crucial point is that this formula and plug this in, and then you can derive same formula basically for entanglement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay.